Eyewitness News in the Morning starts now. Happening right now at 8, the vaccine is soon going to be available in one of the state line's largest employers. The announcement just made this morning. Plus, a local woman breaking glass ceilings. Her path to success in the way she's now looking towards the future. And later, the reason everyone is talking about GameStop this morning and the frenzy it's causing when it comes to the financial market. First, though, winter is coming in a lot of ways you know right now. Reference? I do know. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Am I not saying it the right way, though? Well, I don't know. I just didn't know if you knew what that meant. <laughs> I, I mean, any other movie, probably not, but this one I actually do. It's a series, I should say. But HBO Max reportedly in the early stages of making an animated Game of Thrones show. I don't know if it's going to have the same effect. A little, they don't know about the cast just yet either. So it's all in the early stages. Might actually never happen, but you know, people were upset with the way this ended back in 2018. I, you were one of the I people. I was one of those people. I, I am not one to binge watch and really get into a show, especially like this. Yeah. It took a little got bit. You, though. It got it a couple you. seasons, and then here I am spending eight hours binge watching it just so I can watch it real time when that uh, that last season came out. Well, and people had parties. I mean, th this was yes. a big deal when it was and on. It just did not meet my expectations, and a lot of people felt the same way. So. Sure. I'm just wondering what a cartoon version though will look like. I'm not sure. I don't know if it's, it's like an animated yeah. one. So <laughs> I don't I don't know. We'll have to see. Good morning to you guys though. Thanks for being with us early this morning. 801. A lot of you still digging out uh, from the storm earlier this week. Turns out more could be on the way too if you want to wake up to that right now. <laughs> yeah, it's not great news <laughs> there. Thanks for that. Uh, sure? let's go now to the meteorologist Joey Marino though. Knows a little bit more on that. Real quick though, Joey, were you a Game of Thrones fan? Uh, I watched one episode okay. with a friend of mine in college, and that was about that was it. it. That's it. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of friends though that you wouldn't see them for an hour because they would just <laughs> have these yeah, little parties it. to the go parties watch. Parties and everything else. Um, I, I can I can agree though if they bring what is it an animated one? Yeah. Yeah. If they bring an animated one, you remember when Friends ended and they made a little show for uh, Joey? Yes. Yeah. I yeah. think it won't have the same. Never effect. watched it. I never well, did the either. Spinoffs are never good. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. not. Good day though to maybe stay inside, binge yeah. watch something because it's just so cold. Yeah, it's the coldest morning of the winter thus far. Rockford officially dropped a zero, yeesh. and yeah, yeesh, a lot of uh, places. <laughs> Places out there even below zero. So you definitely want to make sure to add on those layers this morning and give your car a couple of minutes to warm up because of how cold it is. Here's a look at Rochelle this morning. Traffic flowing nicely on Interstate 88, but overall we have the sunshine out there. Not doing much as far as our temperatures. One degree right now in Rockford, zero in Freeport, six minus six in uh, Savannah, minus five in Rochelle. But this is what it actually feels like with that light wind out there. Winds aren't too substantial, but you can see even with a very light wind out there, it makes all the difference with Freeport feeling like negative 13 minus 5 up in Monroe. Got a few clouds moving in there, high clouds from the northwest, but overall we are going to hold on to the sunshine throughout the day today. Temperature wise though, 20 degrees for a high. We'll have mostly sunny skies this afternoon and then we'll stay pretty dry heading into uh, the night tonight. Let's take a look at our first Warren Interactive Radar, sponsored by Rockford Auto Glass and more. Quiet this morning. We'll stay quiet into week's end, but I'll have more on the potential for more snowfall over over the weekend in the forecast, Whitney. Yeah, just what we need. You see a live look at the radar there. Well, breaking this morning, workers at one of the area's largest employers going to start to get the COVID vaccine next week. So Swedish American offering the vaccine to employees at the Belvedere Chrysler plant. The first 1,800 doses going to be offered free. It all starts next Tuesday. Now those workers still have to reserve an appointment. So right now we're in a phase 1B. If you're like, what does that even mean? It means the shot is available for essential workers. It also includes manufacturing to that. Well, people 65 and older also wondering when they can get their doses. They're actually, a lot of people have signed up for this already. Yeah, right now, the Winnebago County Health Department announcing that they're really focusing on essential workers over what age you are. Dr. Sandra Martell is saying, if you are 65 and older looking to get that shot soon, she says other clinics in the area are giving them out daily. You can even register at multiple different facilities. I know there's kind of a line sometimes you don't get in right away. Clinics like Oak Street Facility say they're giving as many doses as they can. See, when we started, we didn't have very many patients and, and today we were, um, we, we saw 60 people and that, that was our, our limit. And so we were expecting that, that we're gonna continue to see those kind of numbers. We want that, num that to go up, but it, it's, um, um, that's what we're able to do now. Uh, I'm hoping that in the future um, we can offer more. 
Well, you can register to sign up for the vaccine. We have all that information, some links on mystateline.com. Well, we're learning more this morning about the long-term effectiveness of vaccines against the virus. Experts finding different variants of COVID-19 around the world. Many of those have been found right here in the U.S. Doctors say that's expected to be a pretty normal right now when it comes to all of these viruses that we're seeing. Swedish American's pharmacy director telling us technology behind the new vaccines allows them to be modified if needed. If a particular mutation is identified that looks like it is maybe more resilient to the vaccine, that vaccine can be um, changed um, uh, to some, that vaccine can end up being changed um, to make it more uh, potent for that virus. Now, so far, about 5,000 people in Winnebago County have been fully vaccinated. Well, White House panel now saying it could be months before everyone who wants a vaccine will actually get one. This comes as 2021 is off to a somber start when it comes to this pandemic. January already marking the deadliest month yet. It just gets worse since the start of this crisis. The month alone, nearly 80,000 people in the U.S. have now died from COVID-19. And according to Johns Hopkins University, the previous record, uh, which was around 65,000, happened in December. I well, knew this morning a stark new warning from the Department of Homeland Security about potential violence happening uh, from homegrown extremists after the Capitol siege earlier this month. This is the first time in a year that DHS has issued a national terrorism advisory. The nation on alert. Homeland Security issuing a rare urgent bulletin warning the public and police that the threat from domestic terror is high. According to the new bulletin, right-wing militants and lone wolves may target elected officials and government facilities and may be emboldened by the January 6th breach of the U.S. Capitol. They are out there. They're angry. They're disenfranchised. They're upset that President Trump lost. In a sign this threat is real, the FBI now announcing charges against Ian Rogers after authorities say they discovered an arsenal of 49 firearms and five fully functional pipe bombs after searching his home and business. The FBI claims Rogers was angry because President Trump lost and was preparing for an attack, allegedly texting, I want to blow up a Democrat building bad. I hope 45, President Trump, goes to war. If he doesn't, I will. An attorney for Rogers says nothing indicates that he was actually planning an attack. But according to an FBI affidavit, authorities fear that Rogers of Napa may have had his sights on the California governor's office after recovering threatening text messages on his phone. <laughs> Law enforcement on edge across the country as the FBI races to arrest all those who stays the insurrection on Capitol Hill. The massive scale of the probe becoming clearer. 400 suspects identified, hundreds more under investigation. Well, also new this morning from Washington, Federal Reserve vowing to keep interest rate policies low. So the Fed's just releasing a statement that they'll keep the rates in place right now, even after the economy sustained what they're calling recovery from the pandemic. Policymakers also saying they're removing certain phrases like near term and over the medium term. Next at 830, we're going to bring you the latest unemployment numbers. They just came in well, from Kamala Harris being sworn in as the nation's vice president to a state line woman making history at Rockford United Labor, you know, glass ceilings breaking across the country right here at home. Yeah, Michelle Ravid catching up with the union group's new leader, who's just hoping to make an inspiration for younger generations. I am the first woman to hold this position. We've had several women on the board before. I was also the first vice president. Sarah Dorner makes history after Rockford United Labor names her president. She's the first to hold the position in 66 years. It's been a long road for Dorner, having been a staff representative for AFSCME for seven years. Before that, I was a labor representative in Minnesota. Before that, I was a flight attendant <laughs> and got my feet wet that way. NIU associate history professor Dr. Rosemary Foyer says now more than ever, it's important to see women in leadership roles. It's a promising thing to have a woman vice president for the first time. And what's phenomenal about Sarah uh, being in this position is that um, she represents the workers in our society who do two jobs. Dr. Foyer says although it's exciting to see more women in those roles, there's still more room for improvement. It's long past due that people pay attention to the women um, who are doing the work um, that's helping us survive 
in 2021. Dorner says she hopes she can inspire the next generation of women. I have a daughter and she's seven and I want her and any other little girls to know that you being a woman is um, not a disadvantage. She can be authentic and be herself and I think that is something that women bring to the table and I'm really excited about promoting that the next year or two. Reporting in Rockford for your home team, I'm Michelle Rave. Well, time now is 810. Next, Bernie Sanders turning his uh, new internet fame into good, the way he's managed to raise more than a million dollars, all because of those mittens. And Joey, we need those mittens today. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, you need those mittens, you need that heavier jacket today because the coldest start to the day uh, for so far this winter. We'll have more on that, plus the uh, weekend system that we're tracking coming up in the forecast. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Whitney Martin. Elliot Grandia, and meteorologist Joey Molino. Now, your first warm weather forecast with meteorologist Joey Marino. Good morning, everybody. Just want to welcome you to the coldest morning of the winter thus far. Temperatures this morning under mostly clear skies last night dropped down into the negatives for most spots, including down in Rochelle. As we take a live look this morning over by the airport, can see traffic flowing nicely on Interstate 88. We have a lot of sunshine for the start of our Thursday, thanks to a very strong Arctic high pressure system that is to our northwest. But what is that high pressure system is also doing is bringing down that very cold air. And that's why we're starting off with just bitterly cold temperatures out there. Minus five in Rochelle, up to zero in Freeport, negative two in Galena, seven in Monroe, and we're at one degree here in Rockford. Now, thankfully, winds for the most part are either very light or calm, but even the slightest wind does make it feel a little bit colder out there, including out in Freeport. You can see we're feeling like negative 13, negative 5 in Rochelle, negative 3 in Monroe, and negative 6 out in Savannah. So you're definitely going to want to prepare for that cold before heading out the door this morning. Put on a few extra layers and even warm up your vehicle uh, before heading to your destination. But overall, we are staying pretty quiet. You can see here on satellite and radar, we did have a couple of high clouds stream on in from the northwest, and that's because of a ridge of high pressure that has taken hold of the central plains. Now, closer towards the surface, we have this very strong Arctic high pressure system, and that's going to keep us cold and sunny, not only for today, but also heading into our Friday. So for the forecast today, 20 degrees for a high. We do stay mostly sunny. Any cloud cover that we see generally throughout the morning will give way to more sunshine as we get into the afternoon, but it's going to be another cold one out there. So you're definitely going to want to hold on to those extra layers 
uh, throughout the morning. But let's take a look at future cast. You can see that we do have a couple of high clouds moving overhead by midday today, but that gives way to more sunshine uh, by the afternoon as that high pressure system dries out the atmosphere. As I mentioned, temperatures in the low 20s, we're going to see wind chills still in the uh, upper t upper single digits and low teens. So that's why it's going to be very important to hold on to those extra layers going into this afternoon. Now we do have the opportunity for a few more clouds overnight tonight, but then we see partly sunny skies as we head into Friday and that high pressure system uh, moves on to the east of the region. Now we're all eyes are on a storm that's going to be moving in by this upcoming weekend. The st storm timeline is going to be Saturday afternoon, late Saturday afternoon into Sunday. Accumulating snow becoming more likely. The potential for several inches is there. We just have to hash out a few more details with this storm system in the next 12 to 24 hours. But travel impacts are likely again with blowing snow and then also reduced visibility. But here's the track of that system. The possible track takes it through the southern plains south of the state line, similar to the storm system that we had earlier this week with the best chance for accumulating snow through the state line and into the Great Lakes region. So something to keep an eye on for the upcoming weekend. 20 degrees for a high today, mostly sunny skies. We do stay pretty quiet tonight. Another cold night, though. Temperatures back down in the single digits. Now, as we look at the forecast going into the weekend, we're going to see highs in the upper 20s Friday, 30s over the weekend, but all eyes on that system. We'll have more details uh, in the next couple of days. Back to you. All right, thanks so much. 816 right now. Take a look at this image. Bernie Sanders just kind of hanging out. He's in his uh, folding chair. He's got his gloves on. You know, this has been going everywhere, you guys. If you've been on anywhere on social media, you probably saw this. Well, now those mittens right behind me bringing in a whole lot of money. Apparently there are images printed on t-shirts, sweatshirts, there's stickers that are out. Look at all the places that Bernie is popping up. Well, these are available on the website and sold out instantly over the weekend. By Monday, they sold out again. Here's the cool thing about this though. So even if you're just like, all right, I'm over this. I see it everywhere. 100% of the proceeds going to several Vermont area char charities right now. A senator has raised $1.8 million. I gotta be real, I, I, they look comfy to me. They do look very comfortable. I, I don't know, how, how much are they going for? I don't know how much they actually, I just know how much is coming in. Okay. So it's a lot of money. Kind yeah. of crazy. All right, time now, 817, latest unemployment numbers just coming into our newsroom. Plus the reason thousands of jobs could be coming to the state line. And next, it's mania in the markets this morning. The reason all eyes on GameStop right now.
on some of your consumer headlines this morning, a list of the best airlines to fly at right now. Yeah, plus some content being cut from Facebook. It may start seeing a lot less politics on the site. The company saying it's looking at steps to reduce the amount of political content in its news feeds. CEO Mark Zuckerberg saying, quote, people don't want politics and fighting to take over their experience on our services. He also talked about not recommending civic and political groups. Apple moving ahead with a new privacy plan that would require apps to ask permission before using sorts of technology that really track users' digital footprint. Facebook relies on that technology to help serve ads. And it's not shocking to a lot of people seeing those on their uh, home feeds this morning. We just released the best airlines in the pandemic. Wall Street Journal's middle seat looking at on-time arrivals, complaints, flight cancellations. Southwest coming out on top, beating out Delta, which was in second place. American Airlines, the worst ranked for the second year in a row. Also a year of furloughs, massive financial losses, uh, mask rules, aggressive cleaning. Also two bailouts from Congress. Been a rough year. Number of complaints so filed with the Transportation Department was up more than 500 percent compared to the year before. Well, now we get to the market mayhem this morning. Dow Jones dropping 630 points Wednesday. It's worse sell off in three months. Yeah, stock in the struggling game. Retail at GameStop, though, skyrocketing to nearly $350. It's all due to a group of amateur investors. This morning, the financial world in a frenzy. Let's get to GameStop. GameStop. This GameStop is really something we must talk about. Shares of struggling video game retailer GameStop, which has closed more than 800 locations in the last two years, defying gravity, up 1,700% this year. GameStop more than doubling yet again yesterday. Thanks to a growing group of young, mostly male, amateur day traders taking on some of Wall Street's most powerful hedge funds in an epic David versus Goliath showdown. President Biden's team even asked about it Wednesday. Our team is, of course, our economic team, including Secretary Yellen and others, are monitoring uh, the situation. The young speculators inspired by a community on Reddit called Wall Street Bets, followed by over 4 million readers. Post to Wall Street bets recently exposed a serious exploitable vulnerability in GameStop stock. A number of influential Wall Street investors were heavily shorting it, which meant they were betting the stock would crash. You borrow shares of the stock and you sell it. And if the price goes down, then you can buy it back at that lower price and pocket that difference. But if you're wrong and the shares go up, then you're going to have to buy back the stock at that higher price. And that difference is a loss for you. That's painful. As it turns out, the Wall Street Titans were wrong, very wrong. 19-year-old J.P. Hurtado and others started buying, sending GameStop soaring. When people see something going up, they're going to have uh, a fear of missing out. And because they, more and more people keep hopping in, the price keeps going up. J.P., a student at the University of Illinois at Chicago who never traded a single stock until a year ago, bought about $8,000 of GameStop using the app Robinhood and says by the close of Wednesday it was worth $82,000. With amateurs like him profiting, hedge fund titans have lost an estimated $5 billion. This is uncharted territory and it's a very interesting question as to what happens next. Certainly there's no mechanism to make it stop immediately. This morning we're asking our morning mug club, what are you working on at home right now? Yeah. Some projects we're all spending a little bit more time at home. Maybe you notice some things at home and you're like, oh, I need this to be I fixed. Know. I don't want this like this anymore. Uh, so let us know. I don't know. Did you work? You did actually something in your living room, which was kind of cool. What did I, oh, I was like, what did I do in the living room? Oh, the uh, paneling. The, yeah. What is it called? Shiplap. Yeah. That's what it is. We put that Looks on. Like, good. What did we do? Yeah, no, I really like that. Um, I'm terrible with projects, though, so I'm the last no, person. I'm like, I'm, I, I appreciate everyone that's doing these home projects I know. and making it look guys, amazing, but I'm, we're both. No, no, not, not so much, too. Us. Yeah, some of you guys, oh, you've done uh, amazing things. I get to see the renovations. I'm like, I'll just live through you guys. Yeah. But it is funny because I looked up and I was like, I've never looked at the lights before, and it does want to make you change yeah. the lights. My landlord is probably watching right now. Like, don't touch the <laughs> He's lights. He's like, just Whitney. hands off, Whitney. That's it. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at some. Your answers right now.